My name is Hauke Pahl from the Promotion and Training Team. Today we want to have a look on how to adjust a mounted plow. To illustrate this, I've brought a Servo 45M Plus here to the field. But first of all, let's have a look on the settings of the tractor and the attachment of the plow. For attaching the plow, different settings must be made on the tractor. First of all, the inner tire distance of the tractor must be checked. The distance between the front wheels should be 0 to 10 cm bigger than the rear wheels. The track right is significant for the drawing point. The correct tire pressure must be selected. Both sides must have the same pressure. The correct value must be selected from the tire manufacturer specification. The lowest possible tire pressure improves the traction of the tractor. When driving in the furrow, the rear wheels should run against the edge of the furrow. For plowing, both lower links must have the same length. In our case, we measured from the middle of the bolt to the middle of the bolt. The lower links should be set as short as possible. This ensures maximum lift on the headland. We will look at the correct position later in the field. Before starting work, the lower link stabilizers must be adjusted. During work, the lower links must swing freely and be rigid during road transport or when lifting. For safe road transport and maximum traction, a reasonable belasting is necessary. At least 20% of the weight of the unleaned tractor must be on the front axle of the tractor. To transfer as much weight of the plow as possible to the rear axle of the tractor, the lower link control should be adjusted as required. The value should be between 30 and 50%. Before attaching to the tractor, the mounting axle must be checked. It must have the correct length. It is the correct length when the lower link extension crosses just behind the front axle of the tractor. Also ensure that the mounting axle is fixed centrally to the plow. In addition, on Pöttinger plows, the height of the axle can be adjusted to ensure optimum mounting for different tractor geometries. After the lower links are coupled to the plow, the upper link must be attached correctly. Here we have the choice of several fixed holes and slotted holes. We use the fixed hole for stone secured plows or when working on level ground. The slotted hole is used for a necessary quick retraction at the headland or on hilly terrain. The position of the upper and lower links must be checked later in the fall. We can preset the disc halter before start working. It should run about 2 to 3 cm from the furrow edge and work at a depth between 4 and 10 cm. After the presettings, it is important to make the correct settings in the field. First, the wished working depth must be set with the jockey wheel. Therefore, we have to adjust the threaded rods on our Servo 45M accordingly. After a few meters, the working depth must be checked. If the depth corresponds to the target value, the plow must be aligned horizontally using the lower links. Ensure that the lower links fall slightly towards the tractor and rise slightly towards the plow. The upper link must also fall towards the tractor. The imaginary line of upper and lower link must be met just behind the front axle of the tractor. This ensures optimum transmission of tractor force from the plow to the tractor. If the plow is driven in the slotted hole, the upper link pin must lie slightly in front during driving, but still be movable. If the lower link control is triggered, additional weight is transferred to the rear axle of the tractor. Next adjust the side-to-side -side leveling. This depends on the tire size, tire pressure or working depth. The plow should sit as vertical as possible to the ground during plowing. In our case, the plow stands more on the coulter plate and must therefore be placed more on the coulter point to the unplowed. This can be clearly seen by looking from behind at the grind of the last coulter. To adjust the side-to-side -side leveling, lift the plow a few centimeters and operate the controller unit for the turning process briefly. Set the inclination with the help of the spindle by turning it in or out. Once the correct length of the spindle has been found, the spindle must be adjusted accordingly on the opposite side. After the correct working depth has been found and the inclination adjusted, the front furrow width must be adjusted. The front furrow width describes the cutting width of the first body. The cutting width of the first body must exactly match the cutting width of the other bodies. For this, the cutting width of the other bodies must be determined. You have to measure from the land side heels to the point. The measured distance is multiplied by the number of plow bodies. 
In our case, we have a cutting width of 45 cm multiplied by 5 bodies. This results a theoretical working width of 2.25 meters. To check the front for width, we add an extra meter to the 2.25 meters and place a marker 3.25 meters from the furrow edge. After plowing past the mark, we measure again the distance from the furrow edge to the mark and calculate the difference. This should be exactly 1 meter. If the distance is less than 1 meter, the cutting width is too wide. If it is more than 1 meter, the cutting width is too narrow. To correct this, the front row width on all servo plows can be easily adjusted via the servomatic adjustment center. In our case, the cutting width is too wide and we have to turn the spindle shorter. Repeat these steps until the value is 1 meter. Once we have set the correct front fold width, we can eliminate side pull by adjusting the drawing point. This reduces the fuel consumption. The drawing point is also adjusted via the servomatic adjustment center. For this, the front spindle must be adjusted. For the correct adjustment, pay attention to the toppling. This one should run straight behind the tractor. If this is not the case, the tractor moves either into the plowed or the unplowed area. In our case, the tractor is pulled into the unplowed area, so we have to rotate the spindle less. The adjustment of the drawing point can be seen on the headstock. The drawing line should run through the center of the rear axle. No side pull or crewing on the tractor and the plow is operating smoothly. As a final step for a clean working image and further reduces of fuel consumption, the skimmers have to be adjusted. The maximum working depth of the skimmers should be one third of the total working depth. The mounting position should be behind or above the four point. If there is a lot of organic material, it is recommended to position the skimmers as far back as possible. In these conditions, the skimmers can be adjusted a little bit deeper. Both sides of the plow should be set the same. Now the plow is perfectly adjusted and the field can be prepared for the coming seeding. More success with Pertinger.